Welcome back to Street Explain. Today, I'd like to tackle a subject that has been important to me, especially for projects and prints on a time crunch. Have you ever had to print an object, but once in the slicer so easy that you weren't going to be able to make it in time? Or are you just impatient and eager to print more objects quickly? I'm Elias, and join me in this video as we answer the essential question for anyone looking to optimize their FDM 3D printing experience, how to improve speed while still ensuring good quality. The first thing that comes up to mind to print faster is obviously speed. But acceleration is also a key factor that is often overlooked. It's like the difference between how long it takes a car to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers and its top speed. Print speed is your top speed, while acceleration determines how quickly you reach that speed. Balancing both is key for fast, high quality prints. Next, let's talk about line width and nozzle diameter. Imagine you're painting a wall. If you use a thin brush, it takes forever but gives you fine details. A large brush, much faster but less detail. The same goes for 3D printing. A large nozzle diameter can speed up your prints but might sacrifice some detail. So choose your nozzle like you choose your paintbrush, based on the job at hand. Despite the nozzle diameter being fixed most of the time, with exceptions for some research projects, the line width can be different from the nozzle's diameter, ranging from 3 quarters to 5 quarters of the nozzle's diameter. By using a different line width larger than your nozzle diameter, you can speed up your prints without too much hassle or harming the quality of the prints. You can also specify a different line width depending on the parts of the prints. For example, putting thicker lines in the inside, while finer, more detailed lines could be done on the outside by tweaking the line width settings. Layer height is all in the name. That's the height of each layer of the print. The larger the layer height, the fewer the number of layers which make up the print, and the faster the print. Hence why this is a crucial factor for churning out prints faster. Lower heights mean better quality but slower prints. Higher heights speed sings up but can reduce detail, leading to well-known stair-step effects on overhangs and curves. For perfectly vertical walls, higher layer heights will allow faster prints without sacrificing quality too much. Given that higher layer heights are fine for basic geometries and fine layer heights allow for more precise prints, the best would be to be able to combine them. So that's the genius behind variable layer heights. Think of this like a fancy art project. You spend time on the visible details, but the hidden parts, not so much. By using variable layer heights, you can sacrifice quality where it doesn't matter. While we're talking about increasing layer height where it isn't really visible, let's talk about combining infill. Thanks to this useful slicer setting, you can combine two layers infill and keep up the speed without compromising visible quality. Temperature, cooling and material selection play a massive role too. Printing fast can cause your prints to droop, collapse or warp like a Jenga tower falling over if you're too hasty. Adjust your temperature to keep the material flowing well but not too fast. Ensure proper cooling so your print solidifies quickly, maintaining structure. One cooling setting you can tweak to boost your printing speeds, especially for smaller prints, is minimum layer time, which is the minimum time the printer takes to build each layer. Flow rate is another key aspect. The flow rate is the amount of filament your printer can push out in a given time. If you go over this limit, your prints will probably have holes in them. That's why knowing the flow rate of your material and print recommendation is vital. Adjusting the temperature or upgrading to a better hot end or a high flow nozzle can improve flow rate. Infill geometry can also influence speed. Some geometries allow the printhead to move more efficiently, speeding up the process. Optimize your infill pattern to keep things moving smoothly. If you're not looking to make tough or load-bearing prints, lightning infill is a great pattern for quick prints. Different motion systems like Cartesian, Delta, CorexY, HBOT and more, and extruder setups, Bowden vs Direct Drive, also impact speed and quality. Think of it like driving a car versus a truck. A lighter, more agile system can handle high speeds better, while a heavier system might struggle with quick, precise movements, especially when it comes to decelerating. If all of these techniques and parameters to tweak didn't suffice, input shaping is a fascinating technique that can help push a printer past its hardware limits thanks to smart software. It involves using an accelerometer on the printhead to analyze movements and compensate for unwanted motions. It's like adding stability control to your car, ensuring smoother and more precise movements. Finally, let's discuss design for additive manufacturing or DFAM. 
Optimizing your design to reduce ports, increase layer heights where possible and minimize bridges and overhangs can significantly boost print speeds without sacrificing quality. And there you have it. By tweaking these variables, you can find the perfect balance between speed and quality for your FTM 3D prints. Remember, it's all about finding what works best for your specific project and printer setup. And you, have you already experimented to try and print faster? Let us know what worked best for you and how much time you were able to gain. And if you really want to break speed brackets, check out the speed benchy competition for mind-boggling 3D printing speeds. See you soon, and until next time, happy printing.